Welcome to the Ten Acre Woods. My name is Mark and uh, we're just doing a little midweek update here on some projects. I've been uh, off work this week and of course it's already Wednesday so it's going by way too fast. Uh, some of the projects that I'm working on, we are open to the public so we do have a wash station and this wash station has seen better days. Now, I built this five years ago, and it's done pretty good. It's OSB board, but of course, it's just uh, weathering really badly. Uh, when you turn on the tap, oh, it's not going to do it now. You have to kind of turn it kind of halfway, and what happens is water spews out of the hot section there. Uh, so I got a new sink, so I got a nice stainless steel sink that we got, uh, well, we pick up from different places, uh, but it's a beautiful uh, sink. This material here, the whole thing was actually built. Uh, I went to the dump before a wedding five years ago that we p had here, and I got all the lumber and the sink and everything uh, that was sitting there. So I quickly put it together, hooked a hose onto it. There, the, the duck is uh, grateful that I spewed some water down. <laughs> She's still sitting there. Uh, but it's time for a remake on this. Uh, we're starting to get, you know, some mold growth on there and uh, it's just uh, not looking so good. So that is a project and I have been... Uh, I'm currently in build on that. So I'm verithaning it and uh, I'm going to laser engrave because of my new laser engraver. I'm going to laser engrave some neat stuff on it. Uh, but I'll wait and show you that. Uh, when I'm done. Hopefully it'll be this weekend. I'm we're just waiting for the urethane to, uh, to harden and then I'll show you that. So something that uh, here is one of the ones that I did. I've been looking for different designs and so I've got that that I did and this one I really like and I had to find a saying to go along with it. So it's just it's really intricate the design uh, and I thought I would make you know some signs kind of like that and verithane them and make them look pretty uh, just as a, as a hobby so I enjoy doing stuff like that and uh, we've got our little store here uh, with just a bunch of different craft things that we've done so Tara's done some leather work and she's made some kind of wristbands here the 10 acre woods uh, these are little keychains we haven't uh, done anything with those we've played around with laser engraving um, but you have to get the right power and it has to be on the smooth section because it will kind of bleed uh, when you when you etch it. Uh, here are some uh, just just uh, photo frames that we had picked up, and we uh, laser engraved those. Of course, the farm hoppers that we have here, uh, we got some from a distributor, and th thought, well, we'll throw them out there, see what happens. We've sold a few of them, uh, but nothing to uh, write home about. Uh, so that's some of the stuff there. Uh, on this side, of course, we have some different merchandise that we had uh, ordered. We had somebody locally uh, do up some merchandise for us. So Shine Like Sheldon and uh, Flirt Like Fernando and Let's Go On an Adventure, Alpaca My Bags. <laughs> so just a, a few of the things that we have here. We do have a store on Teespring, which I want to up date but of course I've been busy doing all kinds of different things it's almost like that kind of stuff needs to wait until winter time when things calm down around here uh, actually here's the sink here so this is the stainless steel sink it's beautiful it's got a nice tap on it and it has an adapter that uh, turn this around properly has an adapter that just plugs right into a garden hose uh, so this is going to make a, uh, a beautiful addition now I mentioned last video that I didn't get the boys, but some of you did point out, as I noticed when I was editing, the boys were goofing around at the beginning, I believe it was at the beginning of the video. Uh, so, so here's Carl, Billy, and Bobby. So another project that we're doing, or we want to do, I want to pick up some plywood and uh, start ripping this apart. If it doesn't get done this week, uh, it's not too bad of a project, it's just a matter of removing uh, some of this uh, wire material and then I think what we're going to do is we're going to put a board uh, a sheet of plywood right over top of it uh, and then of course over top of the window that we've just covered with a tarp here <laughs> um, because they want to make new doors obviously <laughs> oh Carl hey 
Uh, so this is the newer shelter we bought, we built last year, and you can actually see the uh, where they run their horns up and down and along. You're ruining my paint job, buddy. He doesn't care. You don't care, do you? <laughs> Uh, but the inside looks good. So what we've done on the inside is we've put uh, thicker boards down along the outside uh, because we know that they like to, uh, well, rub up against it. Uh, so that may be something we might do on the outside uh, is take some boards. And we've done the same thing on the inside in, in the barn. Uh, we've lined the stalls with uh, 2x12s uh, to give that... Uh... <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Oh boy. Um, so one of the other projects we're doing is this area over here. So this is the, the rabbit hutch, the female rabbit hutch, the male rabbit hutch, and the chickens over here. Uh, so we want to expand the rabbit hutch out across that way. So we're going to head over there right away and I'll show you the clearing that took place uh, yesterday. So something else that happened, I was on my way to check out to see where Levi was, and I was walking down to the barn, and I thought I would show you this. Look at all the hay we got in there. So it's, uh, we've still got some more room in here, but we want to make sure that we have enough hay to get us through the winter. Uh, more than enough hay, because of course, um, you know, we could get other animals in, especially horses and such. I'm actually going to grab, grab a handful of this because Levi is down a little further, so we're gonna bring him down to us. <laughs> uh, so this is the front area here along the driveway, and there's Levi! 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 Oh, yeah, now he's not even gonna look at me. Levi! Here, look, what's this? Here we go! We'll just throw that over there. That was funny when the uh, when we were doing the hay. It was a big truck trailer that pulled in here, and these guys were looking at it as if there was some parade. Uh, because as he backed up, he backed up right close to the electric fence, and Levi was just watching the whole thing. So it didn't take us too long. Uh, well, too long. It took us probably a good hour anyway to unload the hay and uh, we've got some more coming and we're going to stack that outside the barn. And into the barn we go. So we started priming and look Tara's cooling off in front of the, in front of the sun, I was going to say, in front of the fan. <laughs> uh, nice and white. Look at that. Fire engine red. The barn. So this is the barn. So we've kind of decided what we're going to do. This is kind of going to be the barn area. So we're going to paint it like a barn. And then this is going to be kind of like walking outside. So the ceiling will be blue with maybe some clouds and such. Uh, we've gotten a lot of ideas from people that have commented about different items that we're going to incorporate. So that's exciting. So I thank you about that. Uh, and that's what it's looking like. I'm going to, since this is a darker area here, and this is usually where we do the live stream in the uh, springtime for the goats, so I'm going to, uh, I didn't put a light here, because it's just way too low, uh, so I'm likely going to put a light here shining this way. Uh, so that's what it looks like. So these are the boards here that I talked about outside. Uh, so they're two by 12s and uh, they'll take quite a beating and we're going to leave those uh, raw just because the uh, we don't want the animals exposed to the paint. Uh, so we've done this here so what we want to do is uh, likely build some kind of an addition. We don't want too many of these. Recommended is one, uh, one nesting box per five hens. Uh, you don't want them to spend time in there, so you want to make sure that they're not too big and that they're not too small, that they actually don't go in. Let's see if we can see some eggs in here. Looks like we got a couple black ostrilorps in here. Whoa, what is it? No, you don't even have an egg. <laughs> but she's, she's vicious about it. 
Um, up here are the pigeons, so they made their way into here. Uh, we're going to put some sheet metal down here so that they can't stand on it and poop on it. Uh, so we've got some uh, green sheet metal that we're going to cut to that size. Uh, and uh, they'll just slide right off. So we want to discourage this from happening, uh, but we will have different areas for them to roost on because that's where they should be and not up on top of there. And the pigeon area. So that I believe we're gonna do some, uh, some kind of trees we're gonna do on there and we're gonna have some of the nesting uh, perches look like there are branches coming out of the wall from the tree that's painted on there. So there it is and look at how red this size is, side is. So and then you're going to paint what? A white, white uh, cross? Just to kind of make it look barn looking. Oh, well, we'll see how it goes. But it's nice and bright anyway. Yep. Play it by ear. My planet isn't painting. <laughs> uh, cock a doodle doo! Oh, hi, Shanzi. Hi. <laughs> Barry, are you eating? You're so silly when you're eating. Look, hey. There's a chicken in your food. You'd think he'd go in from up top. Here, look, Barry. Look. Look at this. No? <laughs> this is you're disturbing me. Uh, little mellow. Mellow. Why do I say mellow? Mellow yellow. I don't know. Uh, meadow. So meadow is... She's uh, growing up real good. Hey? What are you getting into? What are you getting into? She was nipping a little bit. So every time she, uh, she kind of nipped... I would grab her nose and uh, that tended to work uh, to stop her or discourage her from nipping. So you want to make sure that you're teaching them but you don't want them to not like you. So you have to do it in such a way that is, um, you know, is not going to scare them off. One of the high guys. What are you doing bud? Where's your, where's your other, uh, your other half? Uh, okay, so the rabbit area. Uh, so this is the area that was cleared. So we had some volunteers come out yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. And of course this was all brush. Brushed in, I guess we can say. <laughs> kind of like over, over there. Uh, so it's nice and open. So there's just a little bit left here. And what Tara wants to do is she wants to expand the rabbit area uh, and bring this whole section out right to the corner uh, which is quite a large area and have like this bridge here um, so that's going to be quite a project especially with this trench here now some people have asked hi Petey and Piper <laughs> they love this area over here uh, some people have asked how do you stop them from digging out uh, so what we've done in this area here is we have put down paving stones along the inside uh, so they can't dig down. Now there's sections where they can dig and have dug in a little bit, uh, but as long as you keep an eye on that, here's a, a good little area over here. <laughs> so they like to dig, but we want to give them as much space as possible. Now, uh, this was exciting. If you watched our Facebook, you will have seen step over the electric fence we've seen the guinea here there's a guinea hen so this is a lavender guinea and there's a pearl over there I guess that's maybe the mate <laughs> watching out protecting protecting his female uh, and apparently Tara saw another one uh, somewhere else in the bush so we should have little guinea keats soon well, George seems to have fit right in. <laughs> George? Moira's like, yeah, no, he does that. George, what are you doing? Getting the stuff right at the bottom? Eh? Uh, so George is a Canadian Arcot sheep. Uh, some of you have been asking. 
Uh, and then there has been also there was a question about uh, having him fixed. Uh, so he does have an appointment next week to go in and get fixed. Uh, there was someone that did express concern that it can uh, they can fall into a depression uh, and things of that nature. But weighing the pros and cons, we have uh, fixed our a lot of our animals, especially our goats. Uh, and as long as they have a buddy to be with, uh, like the boys up front, uh, then there is not a concern with that. The concern that we do have is if this little boy here remains intact, then he's going to have to spend time, uh, most of his time up front. Uh, we don't have any plans to uh, breed any sheep because we do get uh, lambs in from time to time so we don't find that there's any need at this point to do that although it would be very cute to have uh, a bunch of little lambs running around um, but we're gonna keep uh, we're gonna fix him and put him in the back area here and he'll blend in with all of the other ones uh, and that's another situation is if we had him as a ram he's going to be more pushy and of course in this area here with people coming in and children uh, he wouldn't he just wouldn't remain back here so it would be hindering him to live with all of the other animals although he would get a chance to play with the boys up front <laughs> uh, where's sheldon oh sheldon it's supposed to be raining you must have got the forecast sheldon <laughs> you and your little house we're gonna have to make this little house bigger aren't we all three of you fit in here, although uh, George is likely going to go in with the other animals uh, once he gets a little bit bigger. Right? What do you think of George? No comment? Okay. <laughs> uh, the ducklings and the, uh, the turkey chick. So here is, we don't know if it's male or female yet, but this is the little, this is Fernando's little baby. Uh, and Tara was saying, if it's a boy, we're going to call him Favio. <laughs> Fernando and Favio. Uh, and then mom and the other female. Uh, so those are the turkeys there. The ducklings are just loving this area in here. Uh, there is... Um, we had, I think it was on, might have been on Facebook, that somebody had mentioned if you leave standing water, you can get, bo whoops, you can get botulism, uh, the, the ducks can get sick, uh, but we do have the hose that's over here that's running, and so there's fresh water going in all the time, and it's soaking into the ground, uh, so it's not hot water. Uh, apparently there's been some circumstances where it's been pools like this, it's been really hot, and the water temperature has risen substantially and ducklings just basically pass out and die. Uh, so we haven't lost any and that's great and they seem to be loving this uh, especially on these hot days. So those are Selena's babies over there. You can clearly tell by their color. Uh, and then we have the Rowan. Oh wait a minute there's a little yellow one there. What's that one doing there? Oh, that one is, yes, it's not fully yellow. That's one of the, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> There's a little black tail on it. Um, so the Rowan ones are the first hatch that we had, and then the second hatch was some spotted ones, uh, some lighter colored ones here, and uh, which is probably a mixture. We're guessing that these ones here are Rowans. And the other ones are like a Rowan cross, since the male is a Rowan. And the mom is not. Uh, now those little black ones there are likely Cayugas. Because there is a, uh, well this one's a Cayuga here. That's mom. And I believe she's got half a dozen little black chicks. Or ducklings, sorry, chicks. Eh, you know what I meant. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, we've got the Muscovy, the two little ones, one there and one here, brown Muscovies. And we're not quite sure on the sex on them yet. So that's, uh, that's cheese and quackers. In the last video, I said cheese and crackers, which, yeah, makes sense. It rolls off the tongue, but it's actually quackers. <laughs> oh, you found your buddy, did you? <laughs> 
Hi, Blackie. Where are the kids? Look at this. We've got we've got Blackie here. We've got Coco here. Where are your kids? I don't see snow around. Let's see. Are they in here? Oh, it looks like just the ponies, alpaca. Oh, we got the sheep in here now. Hi. You're just so cute, aren't you? Yes, you're just so cute. <laughs> Here's Tinker. Uh, so Tinker is not fixed, so she would be one that if we did leave George intact, uh, she is a possibility. But Bronwyn, uh, she is a concern. Uh, so Bronwyn is a dorper cross sheep and she came to us because she had severe prolapse. Now we thought she was pregnant uh, back when she came in. She was acting funny, uh, but it turns out she wasn't. So that was probably a good thing because if she had severe prolapse, there may have been some issues. Uh, so if we left a male intact, we would have to keep him up front because, you know, okay, if we bred her, we're gonna have to do something with Bronwyn. All right, so the kids are not in here. Just Lucy, just little Luce. All right, so let's see if we can get them back here. Uh, this is a trick that we, oh, oh, here they come anyway. We usually call them and they just barrel through the bush, but it looks like the moms are actually calling them for me. And all the geese and uh, two pecans are here. Uh, we don't have a female pecan. Uh, no, I think we just got the two boys. So we do need a female pecan if we're going to have some more ducklings, but uh, maybe we don't need any more ducklings right now. <laughs> There's the kids. They want some milk. Well, maybe. Yeah, yeah, she wants some milk, but uh, I don't think mom's, mom's going to give them any right now. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five. Oh, there's some more back there. Okay, they're coming in. Three and a half months ago they were born. Uh, Coco had hers April 5th, which were the two first ones, uh, which is Nemoid, which is over here. And this one snows. Uh, where is that one? I guess over there, which is a female. Um, so that one was the, uh, the second one. That's something I wanted to do is build like a jungle gym for these guys. They love this little stool here. Another thing they do love is we built this uh, two years ago, I think it was. <clears throat> so this is their kind of little jungle gym area here that we had built. Uh, and we actually built it from, if you can see the bottom here, there is metal. So this metal goes up and around. And what Terry used was uh, an old uh, trampoline frame. So this is one of the sections, and then she tied it together uh, underneath there by just uh, wedging wood in and tightening it against itself. So, so that's kind of neat. Uh, that's kind of a popular area there as well. There's Barry and his chewing. Oh, Barry, you're so funny when you chew. Hey. So another comment was somebody had asked about, uh, can you do a chicken video? And somebody else asked, can you do a pigeon video? And I thought, yeah, no, I could definitely do that. And then I thought, well, we're redoing all of their pens and reorganizing everything. So that's probably a great opportunity to do that. So I'll likely do that in a couple weeks once we get everything painted and then start rebuilding uh, and talk about how we're designing the pigeon coop and the chicken coop, pigeon coop, yeah, that's right. Uh, and the peafowl coop. Uh, now, we don't usually do other animals, but from time to time, why is that locked? Oh man, okay. So, <laughs> this is what we have. <laughs> uh, extremely friendly cat. Come here, come on over here so we can see you. Uh, yes, extremely friendly, and it was caught. Uh, well, not caught. Just, you don't catch a cat like this. It just comes up and rubs up against you. Uh, we brought him in here. He is a intact male cat. Um, and people have been, we posted it on Facebook like we often do with cats and dogs. Uh, we posted the picture of him, and... The apparently a bang. Oh, you're gonna jump on me. You you got all your claws too. <laughs> um, a bangle. 
So uh, I thought bangles were more spotted, but um, I guess it depends on the generation. And apparently bangle cats are extremely friendly. Um, so somebody else in the city said that they picked up some bangles uh, that are about a year old, and that's what this cat kind of looks, about a year old, just a young one, uh, from this area. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's the cat, but he is extremely extremely friendly um, <clears throat> so we have had dogs and cats and different animals that um, you know we offer we've got this area here which is really an area that we just store all of our stuff uh, we've got to organize this and we did discuss that it's yet another project uh, maybe we'll do that in the winter time like we say we do all of our projects we do have a wood burning stove in here uh, and we do have supplemental heat over there um, so you know again it's uh, it's quieter in this in the winter time we do do a bunch of classes like um, uh, cleaning wool and spinning wool carding it and all that stuff uh, oh gosh <laughs> those nails <laughs> so you can see how friendly he is hey bud oh man yeah, I realize that's how you do things, but come on. <laughs> uh, so if anybody out there is looking for a very friendly cat, um, the concern that we have is to have the cat around is we've got a bunch of ducklings out there. And, um, you know, we would, we would, hi, we would rather that uh, the cat eat cat food rather than uh, little ones, right? Uh, so if we could be assured that this little guy wouldn't do that, it would make a grain, great bar barn cat, wouldn't you? <laughs> Jeez, just crazy. <laughs> anyway, um, that's the cat that we have. Now something else that happened this afternoon was, uh, and this has happened before, um, Tara and Marlene were inside the barn painting, Tiana and I were inside the house doing things in there, uh, and Tiana noticed that there was a car out front. So she went out and she noticed that there were uh, some people in the farm. So we are open to the public. Our hours are clearly documented uh, on Google and on Facebook and all kinds of different areas on our website. Um, but sometimes people will come in during the week. So uh, a car pulled up and of course, I think it was like four or five kids got out of the car and they just walked up to the gate. Uh, they did put in a donation because we asked for a donation of $5 per person. Uh, so that was fine, but then they just kind of walked in and they were in there for about half an hour. Uh, before Tiana actually noticed they were out there uh, and then uh, Tara went. Uh, she, Tara actually was wondering who was up at the house so it was kind of a crisscross. One thought the other one knew the car was there. Uh, so last year uh, the same thing happened. Uh, we had uh, two vehicles that pulled in and then they went in to the animals, just walked right in. Uh, there was no phone call or anything asking, you know, or, is anybody here? Uh, they just figured they would go right in. So the big concern we have is our animals. Uh, our rules are in place to protect our animals and for people to have a good time. Uh, and our rules are there's no running and there's no picking up animals uh, and there's no hand feeding. Uh, and of course last year we pulled up the cameras and we noticed that they had actually picked up some of the animals. Uh, some of the animals that were in a recovery area uh, that had uh, concerns and one of them was a pig and uh, so it just everything turned out fine but we want to make sure that that doesn't happen again so something that I was just thinking of this morning actually I thought about it uh, a couple weeks ago is just basically a railway crossing gate uh, like a long two by four two by six uh, kind of on a pendulum on a hinge on the one side uh, and maybe painted uh, the word closed on it and then that can kind of go across the driveway. Uh, we have used a sawhorse with the close sign on it uh, but then we've had people that have parked on the service road and figured oh well we'll just walk in uh, so they parked outside and then walked in so uh, I guess people just really want to come out and see the animals uh, but uh, we're going to have to um, monitor that because of course uh, it is making sure that the animals are protected and happy and that people are monitored. 
So the rain came and so did a couple visitors. So we have Gabby and you're from yeah. Barcelona. I am from Barcelona and I am doing Trans Canada by bike. Yeah, and you started in where? In Montreal? Montreal and I go to Vancouver. Vancouver. And then you met up with Jeremy uh, in around uh, White River area, Thunder Bay, in around that area. Somewhere close after Uppsala. And then you're moving to BC because yeah. you have family there. Yeah, exactly. And you're kind of playing it by ear. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. Perfect. Well, the best of luck to both of you. Thank you. <laughs> and that's it for this episode. So we uh, subscribe to Warm Showers, it's called. And it's just bikers that come in from across Canada that travel back and forth and they're looking for a place to stay uh, and a warm shower. Uh, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we will see you next video. Take care. Bye-bye.